Good morning, everyone. Let me just share my screen for a second. You can see it, right? Thank you. So today we're going to talk about advanced visualization tools. I know by now you guys know this uh, tools like Matlow, Plot, uh, but we will see advanced uh, other tools which can help to visualize. Okay. So introduction. So as you know, data visualization plays a crucial role in understanding and communicating insights from complex data data sets. So Python has a rich ecosystem when it came to creating visualization, attractive visualization. So there's a lot of Python libraries who can do this particular task. So the more you have data sets, a lot of when you have complex data set, uh, choosing the right tool is important because not every visualization tool can handle a big data set, a complex data set. So before we go into the tools, uh, what are the common mistakes that are going to be made uh, that are made when doing visualization? One thing would be overloading. So when we give too much information to our visualization tool, it's likely the visualization would not be as clear as much for uh, the audience. So overloading is one of the mistakes, pushing everything in the visualization using inappropriate chat types, uh, can mislead audience or obstruct the data message. So you have to understand which data chart data types are relevant to this particular task, to this particular audience, uh, and ignoring the importance of color theory. So we have to also be very, uh, we have to give a place for what kind of color should I use because our audience might be colorblind viewers or just like our audience could be anyone. So we have to be considerate of our audience who are we building it. Is this color appropriate for that audience? We have to uh, be considerate of that, but this is a common mistake that is made. We don't give much to the color theory that we put in our visualization. These are the most common mistakes that happen in visualization, how we can over Come, these mistakes would be simplifying the data. One thing would be that one, uh, without losing the important information. Maybe we can use some reduction meters, uh, like like PCA. I think you have used it before, uh, or I think UMAP also does uh, the emission reduction. We can just uh, try to find ways to simplify the data, or maybe we don't have to pass all the data if. The visualization is not affected with losing information. Just depends on what we're working on or what kind of data we have. We can try to come up with different ways to simplify the data and segmenting the data into more digestible parts through a series of visualizations. So instead of visualizing it, it all the data in one particular graph, we can divide it and just uh, show that data visualization in series of charts or in series of visualization techniques so we can use that for continuously iterating your design yeah we have to be considerate of our audience so if the audience doesn't like the first choice we made we have to do survey on those feedbacks and try to improve our visualization technique uh, this would overcome these mistakes for color blind people and others, we have to consider if they are color blind, we have to choose a color that is more going to be seen by them. Depending on our audience type, we can figure out the color theory as well. So these are just repeating it and data overload, data quality. If our data is not qua uh, quality enough, uh, it can mess up our visualization. So we have to uh, make sure our data quality is good because, mm -hmm. but if it could be a challenge if the quality and accuracy of the data is weak. Cost constraints, this might not be uh, as visible. I mean, not all tools are 
cost mm -hmm. even that platform that can you you could integrate with your system in those platform for visualization in just platform that does cost they are not free to use uh it's not as a problem but for big productions you might use those platforms which are costly so cost constraints can be challenging security concerns which is on your visualization you are displaying the data right so that data can be something that shouldn't be seen by everyone so you can do some authentication to make sure those data on that visualization is accessed by only few some people by others it shouldn't be seen so we have to also consider security because we can pass relevant information to the to the, to not the right person we can do that so we have to this could be a security concern so we have to be careful on that accessibility concern and so this can be different challenges but we can overcome them by using different tools and different mechanisms so for our own so what are the advanced visualization tools that are considered so uh, these are not the only ones it's just some of them these all uh, tools are there is a company whole office they provide all these tools to be used. I have shared their uh, site on the reference. You can access all of them. They have a, a very deep documentation. How you can access this particular uh, data shader and panel are different tools. It's a mistake, a writing mistake. So uh, we can uh, access all these tools for our advantage to do visualization. So they have different functionalities, pros and cons. Where is this one is particularly not a tool, it's just a, like the same, it gives you different uh, beautiful colorings. We will see them later, so you can uh, combine with the other tool and have a better color coloring for your visualization. So, uh, you can see here if every each one of them have a link footage which you can refer. So the whole of this platform is the ones that I just told you about. They pro, uh, provide all these services which you can access. So maybe you can see the whole of this panel, the panel tool. My internet is a bit weak today, but let's see. In the meantime, you can see that. So the color set is a library that you can uh, use. So it gives you this beautiful uh, color. So especially if, if you can see the, the fire color here, when you put it on your graph, it can give you this kind of beautiful uh, representation on your, on your chart. So it can be easy to understand your distribution of data which are the most distributed, which are not. So this kind of uh, attractive visualization you can access through the color set library, which again, Holofiz does provide. So currently the panel is working anyway. Okay. So each I have put their link, which you can access and try uh, to use. Not everything will be useful to you, but you can use the one that are useful. So references in here. Let's just see an, uh, a demo on how we can, at least some of them, the panel, the HTV pilot, and the data shader. We can use those C for visualization. So if you can see this particular notebook, I have this data set. I have used three data sets here. One is this one is entirely a longitude, longitude latitude value uh, that from your taxi white that I just uh, fished from the website. So they have almost million data sets. It's a big data, complex data set. So this kind of complex data set can be easily. Uh, visualized using these advanced tools. So for this example, we can see the HTV pilot and HTV plot in the data shader library, so which I import here. So I have 
import the color set which you can access in every uh, data visualization tools that are on the slide so i have imported the necessary libraries these libraries you can find them on each uh, pdf file i mean sorry uh, file so you can access them on their particular documentation So here I'm just accessing a texture perimeter, a texture mean in perimeter column for my first data set from this one, these two. So I'm just seeing the distribution between the two values. So this is using the data shader library. So it can give you this kind of representation since it's only two columns and the data is not that big for the first one. Uh, it distributed it like this. But the second one, using the New York taxi value, I have passed the longitude and the latitude, and I have used a color set file. If you can see it on the documentation, I've shown you the file part, and I'm just plotting it after passing the columns. So this is what it looks like. So uh, you can make it dynamic. You can go back to the data shader documentation. Uh, right now, it's just an image, but you, they have the option also to make it dynamic. So we, you can actually see the particular pixel with the latitude values when you hover uh, your cursor, and you can move it around as well. This is an image only, but you have, they have their option. So you can see it. So the more bright colors is the, the distribution of the, my location is really found. The more you get up, it's just it can have different representation. You just have this kind of beautiful present representation visualization for your data. Now let's use panel HTV plot together. So I have already imported them like this here. So uh, in this one, actually generating uh, X, Y, and Y axis using the mathematics random library from NumPy. So it's just generating a value here. So it's just a random generated values for this one. Just to see the distribution, I'm plotting them like this using the HTV plot. And the panel actually gives you a web server library. So uh, right now I'm not running the web server, but you have that option. So it will plot, which this one is dynamic, but it does have a lot of dynamic uh, chart that you can choose still not running but you can see it on the panel they have a lot of uh, dynamic structure that you can do uh, you can implement on your visualization so here i'm just plotting it and i'm plotting it using the panel right now here like this one and they have dashboards serve it gives you a local host url where you can also see in its own dashboard the panel dashboard they have a web server to visualize your visualization as well so you can use that for your advantage and this clifford attractors these attractors you can there are different attractors these attractors are called i have a definition here as well but for if you have fractional values on your column you can uh, use this different type of attractor algorithms to plot your data so here they use this cosine this functionality you can see here the cosine sine functionality so they accept uh, as an initial value your table data and using this sine cosine functionality they will create their own array starting from your column and data as an initial value and they just try to magnify your data and see the distribution really well it's just an option that you can implement, but there are different attractors that you can use. So the Clifford attractors exhibit complex chaotic behavior and can produce intricate visually striking fractal, fractal patterns. We imported some key properties. Uh, these Clifford attractors include when you use them is sensitivity to initial condition. So small changes in the initial value x and y which in this case is the data that I pass, the initial value, the data that I pass to this algorithm. So they they show you, uh, if you put a small change on those initial values, how can, uh, what kind of output you get 
So they can show you what, how much smooching can affect your data. So smooching in the way can lead to drastically different trajectories over time. So a hermarkov chaotic system, they also do self-similarity. You can the fracture part generated by the P4 attractors display self-similarity, meaning the smaller section of the attractor resembles the larger hole. Uh, in unusual shapes, usually we use Clifford trajectory algorithm. Uh, the kind of image that you will get will have an irregular shape. Uh, since they all they generate the data after getting your initial your value, your columns value or whatever the, uh, your initial values, uh, it's likely to have an irregular shapes. So, for example, for this example, this is the shape that I got. This shape. So they can be really regular shapes. Uh, they can show you the distribution of data and the small changes that is made by the trajectory, how it's affecting your data set. So this black uh, flat colors show you that there's a too much distribution on this particular data set. This uh, small pixel, black pixel shows you there's somewhat a distributed distribution of your data and the white is just showing you there is no particular data on there so you can try to manipulate the data sets and see different uh, come up with different analysis which the clifford trajectory does uh, but this uh, is one of them there are a lot of attractor algorithms which you can implement to manipulate your data and again i have you after i manipulate the data i have a data shader to do the visualization. So the final in color set also, I think I have used it here as well. I have used the color set to give it a dim gray color, which I can change again to other colors. So uh, here is the one that I talked about, what the flagged black areas that this uh, described. If you want to understand what fractal attractor means, uh, there is a definition here, it's a type of attractor in a dynamical system that exhibits uh, fracture properties. An attractor, when you an attractor, it's a, a set of numerical values that a dynamical system approached over time, regardless of the initial condition. So, you can uh, do different, this is just a few of the examples that I put in this demo, but you can welcome to, you are welcome to explore all the data, the tools to get a better visualization of your data. The, all, almost all of them are really good for complex data, big data set, they can handle it really well. Also here there is uh, a file, this one, um, on data shader. So they can also, it also helps you understand behind work, behind uh, the scene, how they actually handle this complex data set. So they use the New York data set here, and they have five, the data sheet, shader works in five steps. And if you want to understand the backward algorithm, how we handle these big data sets, embedding happens, a lot of things happen in the backend. Uh, you can read up on those uh, theories. It's not working. So, uh, is there any question? I think that will not work. Okay. Uh, you can speak up. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. Okay. We have seen uh, uh, some different uh, data visualization tools. So, do you have any uh, parameters to choose one from others, or uh, how are we going to use one of uh, this? Or uh, is this just from uh, using accessible one? Do you have any merit uh, to choose? 
So, for example, the geo views might not be uh, a right tool for this project, for example, because it um, both geographical data, like if you can see on the data set, it can give you an idea what kind of plot that you get. So, depending on what kind of plot that I get, you can decide which is best for you. I mean, the edge plot, the panel, the shader, you, you are likely to use them. They, do, they give different uh, kind of uh, visualization, which helps you to understand the data. So, I think the whole of views also, they are good for four of them can work to understand the data, including Lumen as well. The geo, I don't think it's running, but it gives you like, like a map, uh, like the Earth's image, and it's, it's more for geographical data sets rather than for plain data set you, you want to see an index for access. So this might not be even useful for this big project. So uh, I would recommend you to go on each documentation see there's sample examples and it can help you gives you idea how it can be suitable for your data set if you see the geo views you, you can see this kind of uh, geographical data type of uh, presentation visualization it can give you that i don't think it's that much important it might be you can just uh, try to see them if you want but that these four can be really perfect. The data shader, the panel, and they also can you can use them also uh, in com in combine with each other. The panel actually you can use it if you want to visualize your data on a web server. They give that option. That's why panel is a bit different from others. Is it has a web server to visualize your data, like as a Paris platform from your notebook. It gives that option. The others will do your visualization on your notebook like any other tool that you have used so far for visualization. But the only the thing is they all handle really big data sets. Is that clear, Gitasha? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, any other question? Okay, is it clear? Maybe you could give question on that, yeah, Abdurrahman. Uh, I'm just uh, asking about the panel. You can speak up. Uh, okay. What is the, the Can you hear me all? Okay. Uh, uh, what is the, yes, the benefit of the web server for, for the panel? So on this demo, I didn't apply it, but there is a command to fire your own plot, your own web server for, for the image. I think if I remember, I think panel, panel serve or something, I, remember, I forgot the name, the command, maybe we can see it on the documentation. If you put panel serve in the data, it will uh, give you a local host URL, which you can uh, click and it will create, will run your own local host URL for that, uh, for the visualization on their platform. Um, See, they use it here. Yeah, this panel serve. Yep, you will run PM serve and put it on your 
your book, then pass the data, and it will give you an output saying localhost some uh, port. When you click that one, this particular visualization will run on the panel platform on the localhost. I do remember the keyword that you use is PN, depending on the import that you make, the name dot surf in the data, then you will target. So you can check that out. Is that clear, Abkama? Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Is it clear? Maybe you can give that reaction. If no more questions, we can in the tutorial. You, I have shared the slide on the drive. You can access all the link there. Okay, thank you for joining in. Have a good day.